A recent report by the Anti-Defamation League shows anti-Semitic cases have climbed 388% since the Hamas terror attacks. From October 7th to 23rd, the ADL recorded 312 anti-Semitic incidents, more than half of which it said were linked to the war. Joining us now, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, and Cornell Law School professor, William Jacobson, it's good to have you both. Thank you all so much for being with us. Jonathan, thank you for being in. We're going to, I'm going to, I think we want you to come in at the end of every week, uh, every Friday, actually, starting next Friday to talk about, talk about this. Where we're at with this. Uh, because, uh, again, it's my opinion. I think it's opinion of a lot of people around the table right now that there's a war, a worldwide war against Jews. <laughs> Um, the 15 million Jews that uh, are, are still living. And um, there's a war against them. And unfortunately, uh, we see a line uh, uh, from, from, from Russians shouting uh, at where the Jews in the airport to, to, Ger to Jewish students in Germany being chased across a campus to the shouts of, 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 of send them to the gas chambers, to cemeteries in Austria being burned, being burned. Jewish cemeteries in 2023 to what's happening on campuses in the United States, which there are just some videos that are absolutely disgusting. Students at elite universities saying they feel empowered by the raping and the killing uh, and the torturing of Jews on October 7th. Yeah, I mean, to call it stunning doesn't begin to describe it. I mean, as Jewish people, Joe, as myself, the grandson of a Holocaust survivor, I heard the stories about Jews being beaten and being burned in the streets of Berlin or Warsaw. I heard the stories about Jews in the Pale of Settlement being mauled by Cossacks. I heard the stories about Jews in Baghdad or Shiraz or Aleppo being suddenly overrun by neighbors wanting to tear them limb from limb. But I never thought that it could happen here. And yet here we are today. And, you know, Ambassador Dermer said something very important before. When you dehumanize people, when you delegitimize them, when you demonize them, as happened with the Cossacks and the Nazis and prior regimes in the Arab world, you create the conditions in which massacres happen. We've seen this throughout Jewish history. We've seen this throughout broader history. Think about what happened in Rwanda. Think about what happened in Bosnia. And now here we are where there are leaders who suggest that they should hold all Jews collectively responsible for what's happening in the region, which, by the way, to build upon something you heard in the last segment, this is not really a war against Israel versus Hamas, although it is. It's not really just a war between the West and a radicalized Islam, although it is. This is a war between Hamas and the Palestinian people. Hamas, for the last 15 years, has built tunnels, not bomb shelters for their people. They've hoarded supplies for themselves, not their people. And now they are allowing their people to be killed and killed and killed. And it is just despicable. And the lack of moral clarity by so many leaders in the West, particularly on our universities, Joe, is stunning. Now, you showed an yeah. uh, image just now of a New York Post headline. Like, I could tell you stories about what's happening on our campuses that would make your head spin tell to us. hear how Jewish people That's why are you're here. That's why well, you're here. Tell us. Look. I'll tell you about the story of the student at Drexel University whose dorm room was set on fire because he had an Israel sign on his door. Or that the Harvard student trying to walk across the quad who was visibly Jewish and was literally seized and molested and assaulted by other students who screamed at him and would not let him pass just because he was Jewish. And the real one that really strikes me is at the Cooper Union, which is a college here in New York City, where literally there, were a group, there was a mob, a frenzied mob coming down the street. And there were several visibly identifiable Jewish students. Okay, they weren't holding Bibi Netanyahu signs. They weren't wearing IDF uniforms. They were wearing kippot. And the campus security felt they could not keep them safe. So they barricaded them in a room in the library. And the mob saw this and went to the walls and went to the windows and banged on the windows and banged on the doors and banged on the walls and chanted, globalize the intifada. 
So if your viewers don't know, the Intifada was a series of violent homicidal terror attacks committed against Israeli civilians in the early 2000s. Hamas committed these acts. They blew up buses, right. Joe. They blew up discotheques. They yeah. murdered civilians at universities. And this is what the kids are chanting today at Jews. It is inexcusable. It yeah. is almost, it is just unbelievable that we're seeing this. So, Professor, let's pick that up with you. You were a law professor, as we said, at Cornell, a prestigious Ivy League university. How is it that schools, so many schools over the last decade or so, that have taken such great care for the safety, in many cases, just protecting them from words or protecting them from arguments they don't like to hear, cannot take care with the physical safety of Jewish students. How can it be that that young student can walk across Harvard's campus and, as Jonathan said, not just be yelled at, but be physically assaulted and those students not be expelled on the spot? What is happening with the leadership at these schools? Yeah, well, there's a phrase that collapse happens slowly than suddenly. For Jewish students on campuses at Cornell and elsewhere, we're in the suddenly phase of things. This has been building for 20 years. This is not something that started on campuses on October 7th. You have a combination of 20 years of gross demonization of Israel by the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, by groups like Students for Justice in Palestine, and by a lot of professors. Multiple academic associations have endorsed that, holding Israel Israel out as uniquely evil. You have another thing that's squeezing Jewish students, which is the racialization of the conflict, where it's portrayed as a racial justice issue to be against Israel, which we all know is not true. So you have Jewish students being squeezed, and unfortunately, the administrations don't seem to recognize what's happening, and in some ways, they have aided and abetting it, abetted it, maybe unknowingly, by perpetuating this racial stereotypes on campuses through diversity diversity, equity, and inclusion, and other racial doctrines. So Jewish students feel squeezed, but this did not start on October 7th. This has been 20 years in the making on campus. Professor, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because uh, it's something I know I've been talking about on this network for 20 years. Uh, Jewish students, sometimes at Ivy League schools, sometimes at USC, uh, sometimes uh, at, 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 at state-run schools in the middle of America. Jewish students have been targeted for decades. Um, and I've just got to ask why, I, I've never really understood this, why is it that pro college professors, university presidents sit back and do nothing? And again, not since October 7th, as you have said, but I, I, I talked about Columbia, you know, uh, for years uh, in 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7. What was going on, the anti-Semitism going on in that campus from college professors? Why don't university presidents treat bigotry against Jews the same way they treat bigotry against every other group of students? They don't seem to have the moral clarity and strength to stand up to a lot of the activists on campus, particularly the faculty. I mean, at Cornell University in just the last decade, there have been three uh, boycott resolutions presented to student government, one of which was done over Passover so that Jewish students wouldn't be able to be there. And the administrations have been mostly silent about it. Now, Cornell has been good at opposing BDS, but there's there's a social justice movement and an activist component of campus, which is not the majority, but Cornell and other universities seem afraid of them. They seem afraid of students showing up at the president's office picketing them. And so I think we need leadership at Cornell and elsewhere that recognizes yes. the underlying problem. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I just got to say how Orwellian the term social justice. These same people who proclaim uh, to be th themselves to be champions of social justice, Jonathan Greenblatt, cheer on young women being raped and kidnapped, babies being burned to death in their cribs, being shot up at point blank range, elderly people being burned to death, and that being celebrated by the terrorists who are doing it, who are wearing GoPros so, so everybody can see this 
and celebrate the slaughter of Jews. Social justice warriors support yeah. this? Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. some who call themselves that do. Yeah, it just shows you how morally bankrupt this movement is. And Professor Jacobson got so much right in what he just laid out. There has been a whole BDS industrial complex that settled it on these universities. And it's settled in, I think, in part because of money from the Gulf that's given, you know, untold sums and, you know, fat in the coffers of many of these institutions. And it's come in, I think, in part because of the fact that the anti-Semites have dressed this up as some kind of social justice or political correctness. But there is nothing correct about pushing prejudice. And what we need on this culture. You know, I really appreciated what Willie said when he said, you know, they're trying to keep the kids safe from words. We've had this thing called cancel culture for a long time, where you can get canceled for saying the wrong thing. Joe, Mika, we need to move to consequence culture. Consequence culture is that if you're going to cheer the murder of babies, guess what? Your future employer may decide they don't want to hire you or you're going to, again, harass Jewish students because of the fact that they're wearing kippahs, guess what? You're going to get expelled. Or you're gonna make death threats against Jewish students, threatening to shoot up the kosher dining hall. Guess what? The FBI is gonna knock on your door and you're going to get arrested. We need consequence culture yes. at our universities where kids like learn this is how the real world works. There are issues not of right or wrong, not even of right or left, but good versus evil, and evil needs to lose. And God help us if our university presidents don't find their spines once yeah. and for all and draw yeah. a line here.